So hi all. Uh, so this is going to be our day seven of Google Cloud Fundamentals training. The topics that we are going to cover today is Google Cloud Analytics Services. So here uh, we'll talk about the, the some basics understanding of how the data processing is done on the GCP platform. What are the various steps involved? Uh, how we actually created a data processing pipeline. Okay. Then uh, based on the each step, I'm going to cover individual services which is going to make, uh, be relevant uh, for the step that we are involved right so here the services that we are going to cover is cloud pops up cloud data flow bigquery and at last looker studio now each of these components so pops up is going to cover for the very initial step that is the ingestion then the data flow uh, which will be more uh, for the the processing of those uh, ingested data and then bigquery which is a data warehouse for the analysis the data analysis uh, that you perform and ultimately once the reports are generated we want to present it to with some with the help of some tool now in this uh, scenario we are going to uh, use looker studio it's a very recent uh, acquisition by google cloud uh, for the reporting right so earlier they had a data studio uh, their own product now they have uh, acquired uh, looker studio which is uh, integrated uh, with the data studio and they are now calling it as a looker looker studio so the product name was looker now it is integrated with data studio uh, and known as uh, local studio now okay fine so let's move next fine so uh okay let me give it a second so before actually i talk about the uh data analytics its pipeline as such i mean the overall step let's understand like uh, why we are talking about it like uh, what is the data science uh, altogether before we uh, perform any sort of uh, data analysis right so there should be another slide yes okay Fine. So let me, uh, is it visible to you all or let me switch the screen? It is visible actually. <laughs> but are you able to read all of these services? Mm, yeah, I think I have to zoom it. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Zoom yeah, is required. Zooming, then, yeah. to see. Yeah. No, no problem. So let's uh, do this. I have uh, another screen. Fine. Yeah. Give me a second. Okay. Okay. So last time there was a challenge that uh, the videos, I mean, uh, everyone's uh, profile was seen. So let me fix that first. I don't want uh, the thing to be broken. Okay. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> before we go into go in depth into the introduction of data analytics and uh, the uh, the science behind it, uh, we need to understand, right? So let's first under understand what are the various components involved in in generalizing the data science, right? So if you see my uh, the screen that I'm sharing now, if you see in data engineering, there are I mean data science, there are various steps involved, right? Now. Before we go into data engineering, there is a data science. Uh, I mean, data science. So there is a data engineering step involved, which is what we are uh, discussing today. So it is about uh, the data ingestion, data pre-processing. Then we are going to store the data temporarily somewhere, and uh, then we perform the the uh, you can say data cataloging or the data reporting as well, like using the various tools that we have. Right now, here uh, if you see, these are the multiple components. Like uh, in the data ingestion phase, uh, we are actually taking the data from the external world and uh, passing it to the inter uh, internal processes like internal jobs which is going to refine the data okay before we consume or we serve it to the internal uh, 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 the analytics tools okay so if you see uh, here we are passing on or ingesting the data using either data fusion or pops up cloud pops up okay even uh, the the discovery phase or uh, you can say the pre-processing phase also or even the processing phase also involves there is another service called data flow Okay, other uh, services are also provided by Google Cloud, um, which can, uh, which I, I mean we are not going to touch much, but uh, they are also part of this, uh, the data pre-processing or the processing. Okay, and once the data is pre-processed, it is cleaned right uh, from all the impurities. Like whenever you are bringing any uh, data from external world, 
it may be like uh, not accurate as you need or the format that you are looking for so maybe it involves the formatting it will involve uh, in cleansing of data like uh, uh, suppose uh, some of the images it is not uh, either it is too large or too small so you want to uh, reformat and uh, adjust the sizing of it right and uh, the flow that uh, how it should be going so i want to uh, for, uh, process the data in a sequence or i can do it uh, in parallel so that has to be decided that has to be planned okay and uh, once that is also planned we have to actually pass it through some process so that uh, the sequence is not lost okay so that uh, they are not impacting the overall uh, analysis that we are performing with this data okay so uh, that's where uh, we are talking about the data ingestion reprocessing <laughs> the storing of data and then further um, reporting okay so here uh, now coming to the i mean this this is the step which is talking about the uh, data engineering part i mean in each of these services we are doing some sort of uh, 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 engineering with the data so when i say engineering with the data that means uh, either we are looking at okay um, if the uh, data is having a, a sort of uh, if it is an image format or the extension they have used okay uh, if it is uh, going to be uh, i mean dot uh, png so i actually what i'm looking at is dot jpeg uh, file right so i'm going to perform that conversion so all, all of those transformation those cleansing will fall under the engineering or the feature that I want to uh, look at, uh, what I want to actually, if we are talking from the machine learning perspective. So there, uh, I'm going to create um, some sort of uh, features, which is going to be very important for me. So I'm going to identify that and based on that, I will do the prediction and all, right? So all of that is part of the data engineering. So when you are actually doing some sort of engineering with the data, that is a data engineering, plain and simple, okay? No, uh, no brainer here. But the steps that, I mean, the kind of uh, 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 things that we are doing here, that is, complex internally so it really is a, a complete branch uh in in data in science where uh, it takes a lot of effort to figure out what we are uh, how we are actually uh, extracting the knowledge from the raw data okay now uh, coming to the data analysis part if you see there are again uh, multiple steps so uh, and which are interchangeably uh, being looked at right so you have some data uh, which is present in the reporting tool like uh, something like looker or the data studio which was earlier so this is obviously a, a old uh, uh, map right and uh, then we have the data processing where you have uh, multiple other services which is uh, vertex ai workbench which is basically meant for the machine learning uh, work data flow is for data processing uh, either it can be real time or the batch process data okay the data prop uh, which is built on top of the open source tools uh, like uh, hadoop or uh, spark right so uh, this helps in uh, pre-processing the data, like the cleansing part of it. Okay, there is another tool called uh, Data Prep. So Data Prep is again uh, for uh, cleansing part. So actually, Data Prop is more of uh, processing the data. Uh, data Prep is for cleansing the data. Okay, then there is a big query for analysis. It's a data warehouse. Uh, I think uh, if you remember, so uh, in our earlier session, I talked about like big query is just one product. If you are mastering this just one product, definitely uh, no one can stop you to get a good job with the uh, uh, the data engineering area or the data analytics area okay, okay. then uh, again you can also extract out the data insights using these similar tools so even bigquery is uh, self-sufficient to uh, give you or generate the uh, right set of reports only thing is that we are using this looker or the data studio is not there anywhere right so now this looker studio so this is only giving me a better uh, representation of those data i mean it is a kind of a dashboard which uh, helps me visualize the data even better uh, compared to the BigQuery. BigQuery is, uh, is working mostly with the uh, the SQL commands, right? So you give uh, certain SQL commands and it is going to produce the result or the reports in a, again, tabular form, which you can export to uh, see Excel sheets or, and again, with the looker, right? And uh, this is the area where we are talking about the machine learning, where we are generating the features uh, using, so model development happens here. So now once you are done with uh, this step of uh, data ingestion and data cleansing, uh, now you are good to take this data for further analysis or creating the machine learning model as well right so i can use the clean uh, clean data for creating the 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 you can say that uh, train data say, i mean training set or the test set uh, set which i'll be using in the machine learning uh, part okay and ultimately it helps in uh, performing the data uh, model uh, evaluation definitely this is a, a lot of information here uh, i'm not going to go much deeper for everything but why i have actually selected this slide just to give you a high level uh, input how uh, the overall data science works on the google cloud platform what are the various services involved okay 
you can definitely uh, i mean whenever the recordings are available you can go back and see individual pieces okay so where uh, what of the services are involved and once you have any questions we can cover it whenever we are going to uh, talk about the machine learning work okay for now uh, just want to showcase overall picture of data science now i want to go back and then show you uh, the uh, data analytics how it is done on gcp So let's go back. Fine. So uh, now this is the actual data analytics pipe. Am I audible? Mm, yeah. yeah. I think uh, uh, my connection dropped. Mm. Yeah, right. Uh, so we did not uh, miss much, right? Or or how much? Like ten seconds? I think a couple of seconds. Okay, fine. So let me repeat it again. Uh, so I was talking about the data ingestion uh, first of all, right? So in overall data analytics pipeline, this is a, a, a kind of scenario for any of the organization, any. Uh, time they are working with their data analytics either it is going to be on-prem also these are the high level steps in part data ingestion then you will have the data processing intermediate data storage or long-term data storage as well okay and then ultimately you analyze the data what it is stored because it's, we are talking about the big data right like they are not um, just a few gbs of data but they are terabytes and petabytes of data that we are talking about right so the analysis or the storage and um, other steps are going to be very performant. They need to be very performant. Okay, the scalability should be better. So for that, uh, it is going to make more sense if you are working with it over uh, any cloud platform because <clears throat> they are uh, giving me uh, uh, access to the remote servers, thousands and thousands of access to the remote server, which makes a cluster and uh, make it more performant. Also, it is not uh, going to ask me to have it installed on my or uh, data center or anywhere so it is uh, very much pay as you go basis so as soon as long as i need it uh, for my data analysis i'm going to use it and then once i'm done i'm going to shut down all of these uh, services and uh, uh, and and uh, the machines that we being utilized right to save the cost as well so that's the reason this makes more sense uh, if you are into data science or data analytics field ensure that uh, try to utilize it better with the uh, the cloud computing uh, model I mean, that, that's the way uh, the other, I mean, multiple organizations are doing. So basically, even from the Google Cloud perspective also, I just want to put this uh, 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 kind of emphasize more because Google Cloud is more performant in the area of uh, data analysis as well as the machine learning compared to any other providers. Okay. And that's the reason we are getting more and more requirements on this field. So for the data science, we are getting a lot more requirements like uh, we most of the time get the requirement for either the person should be a data engineer or should be uh, able to work with the either BigQuery. I mean, here, uh, where is it? Yeah, so either it's, uh, he should be able to work with the BigQuery. Should be, also, he should have the exposure to the cloud composure, which is actually kind of a uh, workflow, a data, uh, data uh, uh, analytics workflow. So uh, do we have, uh, yeah, this also you had shared the, uh, uh, cloud workflow right so like that uh, cloud workflows are for the uh, application similar to that cloud composure is mainly for the data analytics scenarios where you create the uh, different steps and uh, it is consumed by the cloud composure uh, and you can definitely see like uh, it which stage it is okay and uh, based on that you perform i mean complete the analysis right so cloud composure is very important uh, uh, service which is again based on a open source program itself so open source program was airflow okay on top of this, it is uh, providing as a managed service. I mean, it's a managed service working on top of Airflow. Okay. You can see Apache Airflow. Yeah, here it is written, right? 
okay so now uh, we we are uh, talking about this data ingestion then batch i mean the processing of the data once the ingestion is done which is done through the data flow so data flow is a product provide uh, created by google itself okay uh, now the speciality that it has is you don't need a separate uh, a service for processing the batch data and uh, and the real time data so just one single product is capable of handling both scenarios which is rare and which is uh, which makes it uh, uh, a better choice for data analysis because now you don't have to uh, opt for another service for integrate with another service for real time data you can do this, uh, do it on the very much on the same service you create a template pass on uh, i mean template when i say uh, these are like suppose i want to I, I got a data here i mean i ingested some data here which was uh, maybe in a dot txt format okay now for my analysis i want to convert it either it into a dot csv file or maybe a dot json format right that transformation is taken care by the cloud data flow so there are multiple templates available it is just a small use case i'm talking about but there are a lot many other use cases but yes so uh, you will have that uh, 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 template which you can call you feed the data and uh, it is going to give you a graphical way of uh, uh, how it is the data is being flowing uh, through different channels and then the transformation is happening how it is reaching to the output right so you will have control at different stages which you can do okay now also uh, there is a data proc data proc is uh, like so here i talked about data flow which is a product by google cloud but uh, we also wanted to give support to the open source community right so now google cloud uh, is actually i mean they have created uh, another product called data proc which is nothing but a managed uh, form of the hadoop and the spark platform so in uh, i mean whenever we are talking about uh, big data uh, you must obviously you must have heard of hadoop or the spark do you anyone can confirm yes, yes. Ever... hadoop i have heard about that but what is the in the background don't know okay yeah so they are actually uh, i mean they are not nothing but a cluster of com uh, computers you can say okay like uh, you saw in the case of uh, uh, the kubernetes as well right so you have multiple nodes which is a yes, uh, cluster right so similar to uh, this also here you have a hadoop clusters we create i mean a set of computers uh, where you are going to feed your data and you are actually processing the data i mean processing whenever you say what we are doing like we are doing either transformation or we are doing some sort of cleansing or we are making uh, it uh, it in any, any sort of uh, i mean enhancement right so suppose uh, uh, i mean when i'm done with this session i take this uh, i mean uh, recordings and i enhance it to uh, 1080 uh, pixels right so that is actually a kind of processing right and that needs a lot of computation okay so that computation is powered by these sort of tools hadoop or the spark so they are specialized uh, uh, services which help you transforming your uh, data in whatever sort of uh, operations that you have created right that is all uh, what we mean by the doing the data uh, science or the data in, uh, in engineering or the analysis right so similar to that there is another tool called data prep so data prep is a visualization tool you can say uh, but also when i say visualization you can actually see what sort of uh, uh, in, i mean impurities or if suppose uh, i got some data in an excel format okay now in that excel sheet uh, i have the entries the entries are malformed right uh, i where uh, the column where i am looking for the number i, I see there is some uh, words are written okay and i need to fix this so that can be done with either of these uh, tools also but when i'm talking about data prep there i can actually uh, see it over the dashboard okay this was the uh, the issue with it and then uh, now i need to clean it and uh, make it better right so that that's what uh, they are doing the processing part of it now once i have processed my data i'm going to send it, i mean store it the the first two steps uh, first of all i'm ingesting the data from here to here also directly right this is going to be my raw data okay nothing uh, no processing was done nothing was done then now i'm taking this data for processing i mean the batch processing uh, or the real time processing that i'm going to clean it or i'm going to uh, make some uh, sort of transformation so this part of it is called uh, so have you have ever heard of uh, these terms uh, etl can anyone explain me what is etl no okay can you give it a try in data science uh, what etl could be data extraction storage and not storage basically extraction and 
then hmm. churn it out for testing purposes probably right. that okay now uh, yeah you are totally right uh, sir so now let's uh, add a meaning to it so when i say e t l right extract mm-hmm. then then transport transform okay transform okay load then loading loading yeah, yeah three components mm-hmm. it now there is another term also e l t same meaning i mean the, each of those uh, 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 symbols i mean the alphabets are having the same meaning now the order is changed so the first one i talked about e e t l right and there is one more e l t right now what i'm doing here so in general we have this uh, sort of uh, transformation that we do so we extract the data from the source okay that is called injection now then i am going to transform it using these processors right and then i'm going to load it load it like i'm going to store it somewhere correct and this is what you are seeing as a flow so oh. the very common one is a etl extract transform load okay and then remain same even if you are working with sap tools okay so this sort of transformation and uh, loading will uh, happen now in this scenario if you see uh, understand now very clearly so we have captured the data we processed it and then we are going to store it that's all there are multiple services on the google cloud platform which is helping me with that okay so we talked about the data ingestion where is uh, cloud pops up even the data transfer service which uh, helps me transfer the data to the cloud storage there is a storage uh, transfer service again that is also used for uh, storing the data uh, to the uh, 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 what you can say so data transfer service D, uh, is going to be either for uh, sql so data transfer service yes dts uh, data migration service okay so that was for data migration uh, now th- these two tools actually mean for the same so one could be for bigquery and the so storage is for actually for the uh, cloud storage okay then we have the bigquery as well so you can store the data either into the cloud storage or into the bigquery for cloud storage now uh, let me move on then i will uh, ask few questions here so first of all let me know so what sort of data you are storing in cloud storage that would be server related and, and uh, whatever the clients are building the kind of application okay uh, what i'm looking at is uh, the type of data that you are storing oh, okay mm-hmm. is it a sql data is it a no sql data or it's a block data the object data what are we storing here anyone but object data right so we are actually storing a object data okay. so in general we are storing a unstructured object data in the cloud storage but there is no harm you can also store the unstructured i mean the structured data like the the uh, the data in the form of uh, tables and all right but the structure will not be there it will be always stored as a type object whatever data is there uh, that will be stored as a object okay so you have to extract it using some or some sort of different tools okay but there will be an object data stored into cloud storage now for your analysis part of it you need the data to be structured somehow right agree i mean how are we going to uh, do any any sort of analysis with the data we, we need to have uh uh a structure uh, to perform any kind of operations on it right yes it's yes. it's like a we look up yes or you can say we can do like that mm-hmm. what is that yes it is oh. we look up in the excel what we are doing mm-hmm. like that so we have to put the data in this that much way so mm-hmm. some numbers will come suppose that right for in, in we will take an example of flipkart okay so this mm-hmm. product has been introduced in the market in this mm-hmm. state so after that it has gone some modification or something so 2000 people has purchased when we have given the discount on 10% so it has sold like approx 20000 so mm-hmm. on that basis we can figure it out what are the condition of the data it means suppose that it will give the discount so people are purchasing and second thing also will come what is the review condition if review will be good then selling will be more this will be the second data like that we right. can figure it out yes so that's what i was looking at also so now one data i got which i am going to just simply take as a raw form save it into cloud storage right 
that's all i'm not doing anything because uh, i may not have that uh, i mean I, i may not be interested in just uh, uh, start transforming the data all together because i'm not taking it in a real time right if it was in real time i will ingest it transform it then only i'm going to store it right but if i have a batch data i mean i had some past data uh, which was there already present for some time like a few years of data few months of data that i had already uh, kept okay now on that i want to do uh, some sort of analysis or i want to actually create some machine learning uh, models so for that what i will do first i will store the data here in the cloud storage as a raw form then i will pass on to these tools which is called the e l t did you get it extract right load here and then i, I need to then uh, transform it here using these tools once the extraction is done i am going to transform it does that make sense Okay, so it depends on which scenario we are changing the sequence yes so basically what i meant here is if your data is a batch processing data okay, okay where you are ingesting in a interval of time not taking it continuously uh, in real time okay? okay so in that scenario what i would prefer is i will take the i mean load the data first and then later i am going to perform this uh, transformation to it for the analysis okay so in right? that scenario etl yeah. will work correct ELT. ELT. I'm, okay. I'm I'm extracting, loading, and then doing the transformation. Okay. I got it. The sequence. I got it. Give me any example of ELT first. Okay. So ELT. Okay. So ELT, as I said, like uh, I have uh, taken the photos. I Photo, uploaded it. Okay. Right. And now, once uploading is done, as soon as it is done, it is going to uh, run all sort of those uh, transformations after loading. Not immediately, but after loading. it is going to do the transformation and then uh, it is going to trigger a process which will uh, show you the uh, the image with enhancements or the all sort of transformations right so their cloud sensors are involved anyway but that is what happens when you are actually uploading uh, any any photos there so it is not happening actually real time first it is storing your data right but etl is very common and that is uh, i mean most of the time used like the real time uh, one i can tell you uh, so suppose you are uh, i mean you have installed a lot many uh, cameras uh, in in your organization or somewhere right now it is feeding the real time uh, data to it correct yes. you don't want to store everything you are recording it but you don't want to store everything okay so what it is going to do it is going to capture the data it will uh, do the transformations and based on that uh, when it finds that okay uh, there are some important point uh, record that, i mean data that i want to save otherwise if it, there is no much of uh, differences no much of uh, uh, in i mean activity which is uh, really uh, diff, i mean uh, out layer of uh, the normal routine i am going to discard that i can give an as uh, uh, even real time example here uh, okay so last year i went to my hometown okay i installed some cameras i did the uh, the changes in my uh, configuration i mean the settings in the camera that we installed okay so uh, what it was doing is it was only i mean during the night time where uh, the movements are very less no one is actually should be there uh, in that place right so <clears throat> as soon i mean uh, i did the changes like capture only if there is a movement okay so now it is started uh, capturing the data only till the time it found that okay there i mean the sensors were able to uh, figure out that okay there is some movement so let's uh, record it keep it otherwise you won't see uh, the recordings available right so that that is what uh, that's completely a uh, 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 etl so it has actually transformed and then it is saving only the required data fine do we have any doubts here fine oh my God. or i confused you all jitendra as per my concern actually if you mm-hmm. will get, so etl you explained like that you have installed some camera in your home if some movement is there it will start capturing the picture correct right okay so it will come under etl correct yes okay that is like a real time yes real time if something is happening it will be processing live yes okay okay but in case of batch processing okay. what i'm doing i'm actually extracting and loading it to uh, my primary uh, data storage okay uh, the data is going to be very much a raw data now that data i'm going to pass on to some base i mean some processing later on like i have loaded it to the cloud storage now i'm going to pass it on to the the processors like the cloud data flow here or the cloud data proc or or data prep uh, is only for cleansing so i'm not going to use that but 
basically we are going to use uh, cloud data flow which is again meant for the uh, uh, batch processing as well now from there once the data is actually processed right and it has extracted out some uh, i mean information for me which is again for the more of the prediction or even for uh, generating some reports okay so now that data i'm going to save into bigquery as another tool right so this transform data i'm going to save into bigquery and again on the bigquery also i have uh, the tool uh, which is working with the the clouds i mean the sql uh, programming so i can run the sql uh, commands and extract out even i mean perform even uh, an, a better analysis of my uh, data saying that okay um, so uh, suppose i want to find out how i got the data right so now i have the data that i want to actually figure out okay how many uh, 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 people have visited my store okay suppose it's something uh, related to e-commerce so i want to see how many people have uh, visited to my store or the online uh, app then i will take a count what product they have purchased i will take another count what was their frequency were they the uh, the re return customer or they are the new customer so all those sort of analysis i will be able to do using the big query so now to uh, go back and then complete this uh, flow ingest process store it you can either store into cloud storage or you can use bigquery storage bigquery will be mostly uh, working with the sql it is only going to work with the sql actually okay so uh, this is a data warehouse also we call because it's able to save petabytes of data similar to cloud storage but cloud storage is for objects and cost effective bigquery is going to act like the cloud storage if you are not going to touch the data uh, for at least 90 days like it is going to move into code line and other uh, stuff but at least for 90 days it is going to charge you uh, 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 more uh, compared to the cloud storage okay now your data is stored here this is storage step in the bigquery as well and then you want to perform the analysis on that data for that you will be using the cloud i mean the bigquery which is an analysis engine so you are going to use bigquery for the analysis again uh, this data can be brought to bigquery either directly fed into the bigquery storage and then you are accessing it or you can also federate that data from cloud storage to bigquery so though it is saving the unstructured data you can actually i mean the tool is actually going to help you extract this data make the right uh, set of a uh, uh, transformation and and do the analysis using this tool itself so here either you can bring this data to bigquery again or you can directly feed the data from cloud storage to bigquery only for analysis purpose generate the report save it into some of the tables on bigquery you don't need to bring everything to bigquery okay so that is also uh, possible with the bigquery uh, analytics tool okay now once you are done with this uh, sort of uh, uh, analysis then obviously you want to visualize that report or from the development side if you are not concerned at least uh, those who are uh, sitting as uh, in the role of business anal uh, analyst or the, the uh, stakeholders or the CEOs of the organization, CTOs of the organization, they are interested more into the reports of those data. I mean, what are the results out of this analysis, whatever we are trying to perform, right? So for that, uh, I should be using some sort of tools which will help me in generating those reports. So that I'm going to pass on to Luca. Okay. So they are, going, uh, they are the dashboards which will give me a better pictureization of what the data looks like what uh, i mean with the help of like uh, either i can have the pie charts bar charts whatever sort of charts i want to create right so i i should be able to generate the report uh, using looker i can also use or pass on uh, or export this uh, information this analysis to the google sheets as well which is also possible i mean you can uh, do all sort of uh, automation with the google sheets uh, uh, once you have the data exported to sheets right so that also can be done and on top of it i mean if you want to perform even uh, advanced analytics what we can do is we can actually move this uh, data after this uh, analysis or just the storage i can move it to the vertex ai vertex ai is the platform or uh, uh, machine learning platform provided by google cloud so that we can use for generating some sort of predictions okay i already have this data with me right so i can use it i can split it into training uh, set and the test set so i will use the test uh, training set for training my mo uh, models and then test will be used for testing the models like uh, whether it is predicting uh, correctly or not okay okay so on very very uh, uh, uh kind of uh, the foundation level this is the steps involved in data analytics pipeline creation and at individual steps what we do we create some programs 
so if you see these are the managed services that's totally fine but these managed services also work with some codes right so we actually need to sit and develop those codes which will help me uh, uh develop this uh, uh, steps fine so that they can perform the transformation whatever we are looking at okay so in uh, on premises scenario uh, they are actually taking a lot of uh, effort for everyone because you don't have anything as a managed service i mean uh, suppose i have developed my pipe uh, some sort of script now to integrate all of these pieces that is very tedious job okay and for that we have this uh, these tools which is uh, providing me more comfort even sometimes uh, you don't have to code because the templates are available right so you can use those templates and it will generate all those analysis for me okay uh, here also in in machine learning as well as for the looper there are templates available which you can just simply integrate and it will give you then uh, the reports fine okay so uh, let me pause here and then take some questions if you have while i'm moving the slides okay yes uh, any questions no questions okay i take it as, as yes and i'll move on then okay so let's see So, so far, what what all things we have covered? We we have talked about high level uh, the data analysis pipeline. So, in that in JSON, that is the capturing of data, processing. Uh, then we did the analysis and after that reporting, right? So, on the very first step where you are performing this uh, uh, the capturing of data or the data in JSON, the data in JSON itself becomes a, a pipeline, right? So, this is a data in JSON pipeline. That is what we can call it. Fine. Now, uh, can someone give me a, a, a op open source uh, example of the PubSub? PubSub is again nothing but a messaging queue. Last time we had uh, discussed about something like uh, on this. What could be uh, any other alternative? Maybe not just the open source. Uh, any other alternative for uh, the messaging uh, servers for uh, uh, instead of PubSub? Do you remember? Rajiv? No. No one has worked with the messaging server? Uh, did you heard of the RabbitMQ? Yeah, I worked on PubSub. Like for mobile application, for messaging purpose, we are doing. for chat, chat application okay. feature. Okay, so, so you have used PubSub, right? Yes. Okay, then uh, you have to explain us now. Like okay. uh, I, I was just calling the APIs and we had integrated some third party pops up feature. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't remember the name now. So okay. that was handling this backend thing. Okay. But uh, so did you explore a bit about the pops up also? Uh, yes. Uh, okay. So what do you know about pops up? Uh, like uh, uh, the connection with the server was continuously whenever we started like application till the mm -hmm. wiki law execute okay. uh, so continuous uh, i can say like uh, we are uh, hitting the server for like receiving the data or sending data mm -hmm. okay yeah, yeah so that is like continuous data processing okay yes D data flow yeah okay what else mm -hmm. so that that becomes a real time uh, data processing right yes okay so, uh, do you know if uh, the connection is dropped? So, will it will it still hold your data and uh, process it later? Yes, yes. Uh, locally caching is done. I can say like local uh, data hold is done. Okay. And when uh, the connection uh, uh, happens, then uh, it starts sending the data, whatever uh, it was locally hold, and mm -hmm. also receive the uh, fresh data from the server also. Okay. Okay. That's that's uh, yes. That's yes uh, from my side, right? So, uh, what do we call it? Like, uh, have you heard of the terms uh, asynchronous and synchronous? Yes. Okay. So, uh, what is synchronous? Uh, synchronous means parallelly, uh, like multiple uh, execution, we can say. Okay. So, synchronous is uh, like continuous. Okay. 
like as soon as you have ingested the data it is going to take it immediately and it is going or the not the data i would use a term here so let's take it as a message okay now as soon as i have uh, sent the message it will uh, be taken up real time and will be uh, transferred to the uh, the subscriber i mean to the end uh, point for which the other recipient for which the data was uh, uh, meant right so that becomes synchronous now suppose uh, i i mean uh, suppose i just uh, uh, sent the message there was a network loss okay now it is stuck somewhere right so do i need to send the data again no i uh, the, the the services like the cloud pops up or other messaging services what they are doing they are storing all the information about that message and the metadata around it like the timestamp and all those uh, information and as soon as the connection is reestablished or the internet or the network is uh, again established it is going to move that information to the recipient right because they are having that information and the and that's uh, where it says as asynchronous i mean very much like um, uh, i i i can be relying on these uh, services based on uh, either it is uh, going to be synchronous information or the asynchronous information right okay so uh, if you just have a look here in this particular uh, cartoon right so uh, pubsub is nothing but a event driven asynchronous messaging service so what is event driven here event driven is like i got a message now cloud function that we know that it is more for the event uh, trigger right so as soon as i get a uh, someone actually ingested some data or the message cloud function will get trigger okay it will pass on the information to pubsub okay we have this new data can you take care of it okay now cloud pubsub is going to see okay uh, when was the data received whether i need to follow any sequence of uh, i mean processing it and moving it to the uh, the recipient okay so it is also going to check i mean the sequence is actually not followed by pubsub it is just ensuring that uh, at least once i need to deliver it whenever possible i am not sure but i need to deliver this information uh, 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 at least once okay and also uh, in the back end i mean we uh, generally like if we don't see but in the back end it is also sharing a acknowledgement to the receiver or or you can uh, okay let's take an example of whatsapp right so you do whatsapp messaging okay now in that what happens as soon as you have written your message and you are uh, you sent it right you will see uh, first of all double ticks and then it uh, turns into uh, blue right so first of all the data uh, the message was sent okay that is one confirmation one uh, flow that is completed now as soon as it is actually read or received by the uh, the recipient for which uh, the message was meant okay now the tool uh, the whatsapp behind the scene uh, whatever uh, service they must have used suppose uh, they are using uh, cloud pubsub itself right so what pubsub is doing it is actually acknowledging back by uh, changing the color of uh, the double ticks right by changing it to blue color so it is actually acknowledging uh, it is not uh, giving a message but changing the color by that only it is just defining it right so you have that capability to uh, figure it out now so that, that is one way to understand how this uh, messaging work right so here you got this like uh, it is uh, in order delivery at a scale like uh, you can uh, send the data uh, to uh, large scales like uh, like mbs and uh, i mean thousands and thousands of messages you can uh, send uh, in every second okay so uh, the, the kind of capability that this particular tool is uh, having uh, that is tremendous also uh, on very general way, uh, general information that pops up is a um, you can say a global service okay so it works uh, for any of the regions in the globe right so we saw that 39 regions are there all together on this platform so it can be installed or it can be working in any of these regions to transfer the information okay and it, it ensures at least once delivery of the information so at least once it is going to send your information and then uh, send back acknowledgement and it is done okay now you also can have an option to filter out some of the information uh, some of the uh, the messages based on like uh, if you are doing any any sort of uh, filtering uh, with the message that you have sent right and obviously it is cost optimized uh, there is uh, another version of the pubsub which is pubsub lite uh, which is again very much uh, available in a particular region not globally available okay then let's see how it works so 
you got a publisher publisher is like uh, the one who is going to act, uh, write the message or who is going to uh, uh, publish the message right then this message is actually going to a topic so uh, pops up what it is doing in pops up it is creating a topic for any of the message that you are creating so logically that is what it is happening there okay then there is a subscribe uh, subscriber for it like uh, the recipient for the message is our subscriber right so it is going to now uh, talk to that sub- uh, subscriber topic is uh, storing the message so the actual message is getting stored into the topic so you've got the step one where you have the message it is going to the topic the topic is created first and then topic is also storing the message right and then we are passing on that information to the recipient because recipient information is also stored with it right in the topic whenever you are creating the topic you are defining okay who is going to be uh, uh, the subscriber so i should have a publisher i should have a subscriber so publisher is going to put the message into the topic subscriber is going to take the information from the topic so the subscriber is going to read the message right and as soon as the subscriber is receiving the message okay it is going to send out a acknowledgement right for the subscription the, uh, the person has opted for like those who have actually opted for uh, like okay i uh, want to be get, uh, getting notified whenever there is a message uh, in place so the message is received and then it is sending back acknowledge okay i have received the message okay just a confirmation so that's the overall flow of how the uh, the messaging queues work okay internally there are uh, i mean a lot of uh, logics installed behind the scene right a lot of coding part is done but the flow is like this only you will have a publisher who is actually publishing some message uh, on a topic and then someone is going to subscribe to that message and then you are uh, getting a message uh, delivered and also sending an uh, acknowledgement back okay there can be different ways of defining this uh, publisher and subscriber uh, flows okay uh, if i go to this step now so there are different patterns here i can have many to one uh, like that is a uh, 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 i have uh, multiple publishers so uh now let's take it uh, from this perspective uh, i have an example of uh, the articles that i read uh, write on the medium platform right so in that scenario i am writing them as uh, the article and as soon as i post it i publish it so i am publishing that uh, article on the platform right so as soon as i publish it there are some number of uh, people who have subscribed to that uh, to to my uh, article uh, or the my page on the medium platform so as soon as i publish any of that messages okay they are receiving a mail about my article okay so uh, what kind of model it could, could be so we have uh, three models here right many to one many to many and one to many so which are uh, uh, kind of pattern it will follow can anyone uh, give it a try i'm just one person okay and there are multiple subscriber to my uh, articles so which pattern will it follow out of these three one to many one to many right now yes. uh, if you understand one to many so you can see the pattern here i am the publisher of the article okay i am i am submitting the article to a topic what could be the topic here the medium platform itself where okay. i am using uh, it to uh, to publish anything right okay. okay so behind the scene they are actually creating a topic for me okay and then those who have actually whenever uh, someone has opted for uh, my articles or in general uh, my page on the article okay whenever i'm writing new article uh, I, they should be getting a mail trigger right so behind the scene as soon as they click on subscribe now in future whenever they are uh, i mean there is going to be any publication from my side as they are the subscriber of that topic okay they are going to receive those publications in their mail okay so that becomes the subscriber now also uh, uh, in in uh, another setup where we meet okay uh, on sunday so in that also you uh, must have heard of that okay uh, there is a way that uh, you can un- uh, figure out whether the mails that you whatever is uh, sent to someone i mean the uh, we have sent out some mails to someone right uh, uh, for follow up or for anything so uh, we know that when the person has opened the mail how because Uh, there are tools which will tell you okay uh, this person has uh, uh, opened the mail if it is not open you will not get any acknowledgement right so just try to relate with that scenario as soon as the subscriber will open this mail okay which will be seen by the topic and the topic will close it okay the uh, the message is triggered now don't set it any further messages so one time delivery is done 
uh, the message was read out okay now i don't have to send it again right so it is just ensuring one time delivery that is what it means one time delivery at least one time delivery it is not going to create any duplicacy with the particular thread if you are initiating a new message that's uh, completely different okay but for one particular message it is only going to send it for one time that's all now this uh, patterns you have already seen one to uh, one to many you have understood if you understood that now you see the many to one and many to many so in many to one again you are having a multiple publishers who is writing to same topic anyone can uh, tell me what can be uh, uh, the scenario here i mean uh, what can be an example here anyone give uh, give it a try anything comes in your mind any random thing are you using a whatsapp group yes okay um, whenever someone writes or drops a message in the group everyone gets uh, the notification yes but for you you are a, uh, an individual right yes so in that scenario even any of a member from the group is become the publisher there right so anyone can be publisher but as you are uh, reading it out individual level you becomes the whole subscriber for it right okay i can tell not, not clear okay no. so in whatsapp group okay there are multiple people correct they keep on sending the message correct you are able to, as a subscriber or the part of the group you are able to read to all of those messages at once right yes okay so that is where it becomes more of a many to one in this scenario okay but many to one yes many to one but okay. it is not exactly the many to one uh, scenario i mean i'm just giving one example if you are the only one who is reading it but as soon as other members are also reading the messages right so yes. sup- suppose i oh. have written yeah all group members are reading that message correct yes so suppose i have written a message and uh, vishal also wrote a message okay correct in the group now mm-hmm. it is read by nares it is also read by you and saif is also reading the message right so there are multiple publishers and there are multiple subscribers for it correct correct is it clear till publisher how come we become publisher like others are not publishing why not see uh, it is like a, a continuous flow right so you okay uh, let, let's not confuse it i'm just saying uh, from the okay so suppose i'm um, assigning rajiv as a admin right for the group now rajiv and i can write the messages to the group we become the publisher okay yes. i okay. have disabled i have disabled the writing for the messages for anyone else okay now we become the publisher but the readers will be anyone else in the group whoever else is there in the group they becomes the reader for it or the subscriber for it i'm just uh, giving an example don't go uh, in- into overthinking of that process right yes makes sense <laughs> yes okay even even you can uh, see from this perspective uh, i i know that um, many of you are using youtube there are multiples of youtube channels okay you have subscribed to multiple channels right so now multiple uh, sub- uh, channels which you have subscribed so that becomes this model but when multiple people are subscribing to multiple channels that becomes the many to many and if you as okay uh, that this one would be not multiple of uh, uh, channels but single channel subscribed by multiples this will be the multiple uh, subscribe uh, subscription done by you uh, for multiple channels right this is very very uh, generic uh, uh, understanding here so many to one many to many and one to many the concept is publisher topic subscriber any confusion no got it got it okay anyone else anyone else got any question should i move forward yes yes okay so this is for the ingestion step 
you have this particular step for ingesting the data you are i mean uh, though we are seeing as a message so messages are what they are containing they are actually containing the data the data that we want to uh, to ingest into uh, our internal storage or if you want to pass it on the processing so here uh, it becomes two steps if i am going to take it from a uh, pubsub and uh, i can directly input into cloud storage or maybe the bigquery then it becomes very much a batch process data right so i am not doing anything with this data as of now i am just going to store it which is extract and load el now t i am not doing transformation i am not doing as of now i will do it later but when there is a scenario i am processing the data for real time okay so in that what i'll be doing i am going to pass on this pubsub uh, data whatever i have okay so now the data flow becomes a subscriber for this data i am going to pass on this data or the message from external world to pubsub pubsub uh, uh, being subscribed by data flow so data flow will have this uh, information as the next step okay and where i can either uh, use as a batch also or i can use it as a uh, real time both can both is possible i mean depending on the various use cases that we want to work with i can have uh, these two pubsub and the data flow combined pubsub is for ingestion data flow is for actual uh, data pre processing or the data processing okay so uh, pubsub is not doing any sort of transformation anywhere it is only uh, taking my message it is just a message holder and then passing on so that's why uh, we call it a uh, a uh, messaging servers uh, to them okay and they are very performant okay so let's move on to the next service so what will be our next service here which service we are going to cover now data flow right so if you can read this what is a data flow it's again nothing but a data processing service which is meant for streaming as well as for the batch data okay though uh, i mean as it is provided by google cloud itself so it becomes more of a serverless i mean uh, you really don't have to configure any of the infrastructure you don't have to develop any application on top of it right this is a whole complete setup that you are getting from the the provider itself the cloud provider itself so uh, whenever i mean obviously uh, whatever these uh, services as of now we are covering as a theory in the next session we are going to look into it through the console how it looks like and probably we'll uh, try to cover i mean obviously we will cover uh, some of the labs so we'll see which one we can touch base right so we will uh, look into the uh, the lab perspective as well for now just uh, try to understand the logic behind it or the, the the theory of uh, these services so uh, data flow is a serverless data processing service for both batch and the streaming data and uh, now by now you should understand what is batch data and the streaming data right like when you go youtube live that becomes your streaming data right but when you are just uh, uploading your video that is a batch data i'm just uploading it there okay because it was already available now even this data flow is uh, built on top of another open source uh, product which is called apache beam okay so it is based on the apache beam model uh, and uh, in the form of a managed service provided by google cloud okay here uh, okay so let's see how it is uh, working so when i talk about this uh, the working of uh, uh, data flow right so what it is doing now the step uh, the very one uh, first step that is read the data source so it is going to read it from you can see here if you are able to read so it says it is reading it or taking it from the cloud pops up or maybe some other custom source uh, from the external world or it can also consume the data from bigquery as well okay bigquery and even the big table right so when it is taking it from the bigquery or big table even in uh, in that mostly it is going to be batch process data or we can have a real time as well in from that scenario also i mean maybe uh, we are taking it from other route also so uh, not uh, that we can say it's only the the uh, batch one but uh, at times we can have a real time data as well okay so 
now here uh, we we got this data so we are reading through the data source okay then the next step the data is being passed on to the various stages in the data flow okay so the second step is what we are doing the actual transformation of this data okay the data transformation could be like as i give an example so i have a text data i want to convert into a json format that is very uh, pretty much a very general uh, form of uh, transformation that we do right so uh, i'm i'm going to convert it into a json format for that what i'll do there are steps which is called like p collection so if someone asks you during your um, uh, uh, discussions maybe in the interview or somewhere uh, you you want to respond to what is data flow so you see there are steps called uh, p collection so p collection is nothing but a kind of immutable data storage uh, temporary data storage whatever data that you are uh, moving on and the uh, the arrows in between they are the uh, p transformers <clears throat> so they are actually do, taking care of transforming the data then again intermediately you are saving the data for uh, the intermediate form so that you you want to ensure the integrity of data all the time right i mean i got it uh, i'm doing some transformation in between uh, i want to split it into multiple component so that uh, i can fasten up the uh, the uh, rate of uh, transformation okay and then i'm going to again aggregate or combine it together before i generate an output right all those sort of transformation and how they are speeding up that's a, a, a large topic to discuss but on high level this is uh, how it works so you are giving the going to the next step where data transformation is happening okay and what the data transformation is uh, done now i need to sync out or sync in this data uh, to the the next step where it can be either going to the uh, big query back back to the big query or i can pass it on to the uh, cloud storage or or whatever we have decided based on our use case i can even pass on to cloud sql okay so it depends uh, what use case i have uh, in my hand okay so that is what we do with the uh, data flow then uh, <clears throat> you can see um, I, i can do like the sequential uh, uh, storage of it or sequential uh, uh, separate computation for uh, this data uh, flow okay so all of this processing is done with the data flow uh, on generalized way right again uh, from the security and pricing part as you understand uh, uh, similar to any other services it is going to be a paper uh, i mean pay as you go model or you can have uh, uh, the charges based on how much uh, computation being utilized the memory that is being used then amount of storage being utilized right so this is a better alternative uh, for any sort of uh, the open source tool that you are using right or uh, in data analysis we use okay and what else we can cover here yeah so that's that's all uh, on very high level that i want to talk about the data flow not much details to add at, at this point of time apart from what we already discussed right the things that you need to remember it is a support i mean it is a flexi product from google cloud uh, based on the apache beam the open source apache beam it is uh, uh, it supports batch and the real time data uh, processing right and uh, there are the steps like uh, you read the data like you read the data from source uh then you are going to transform the data and then you are going to write it to the data sync okay now the data sync and the data source they can be either of it either it is coming from the big query or plain text from the cloud storage or you are reading it from the pubsub okay so this source and sync can be same or different but they can be multiple sources okay any questions on this no okay so let's move next then fine so uh now if you uh see what we have done now so far we got the ingestion of data done we got the transformation done now uh some i mean whatever sort of transformation was required that we have done right now next is we want to store the data into big query or we want to perform the analysis of the data using the big query itself fine so big query is completely a proprietary product from google cloud okay they are uh, like uh, they, they are the one tool used for whole data analysis what we perform on on the platform so it it is a kind of a data warehouse i mean using the sql uh, queries like uh, you can have the standard or the uh, the legacy sql queries that you can write 
now with this uh, you are able to perform all sort of analysis with uh, terabytes and petabytes of data okay so here there are unique features of it like uh, there are some best practices uh, about it uh, which is uh, very specific to a data scientist or the data engineer uh, who is uh, involved with these steps uh, suppose uh, i can give you an example of uh, uh, suppose I, i'm taking the uh, the data from the uh, google ads right so whatever data it is generating uh, i'm going to analyze it using bigquery or or even better uh, let's take an example of e-commerce platform so from e-commerce platform uh, it is obviously going to generate a lot of uh, information a lot of details of uh, whenever a customer uh, comes in um, on the platform and it is going to try uh, to look for some different products uh, will will uh, keep on looking for longer or shorter period of time everything is getting captured right now uh, then what product it uh, is going to buy whether he is just putting it into the wish list right so this these are are the actual data for them uh, which uh, behind the scene is getting captured all the time otherwise you would uh, not get that recommendations uh, on your mail or uh, or everywhere else whenever you are actually opening the apps or working with any other two uh, uh, applications uh, not only for the e-commerce platform so this is happening just because behind the scene someone is actually taking your uh, this uh, uh, information and they are doing the analysis using this similar tool so uh, i mean similar to bigquery or the bigquery itself right uh, or i can also uh, okay so let's go with that example itself so here uh, that information i got i captured it i have saved it into bigquery because bigquery is big uh, very big uh, data warehouse okay now with that i am going to perform some sort of analysis based on what i want to know what i want to know to enhance Uh, uh or uh, to create a better uh, selling proposition for my products to uh, engage the client better right so i should be able to perform those analysis so for that i am going to pass on the uh, information to the bigquery i will run through uh, a set of uh, sql commands from where i am able to extract those important uh, information okay like uh, you can say an example of uh, in case of any uh, uh, cab services uh, app right so how easily they are able to find out okay where uh, where is a uh, immediate surge in the number of uh, 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 customers or where uh, there is uh, a lot many uh, 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 crowd uh, where they can actually just uh, divert the route right so all those are actually coming out of this analysis only which is done using this bigquery okay even the google map uh, behind the scene must be using bigquery for all sort of their analysis okay and uh, here if you read through so how it works it is taking the ingestion so it is taking the ingestion from like the batch one uh, when i was talking about so it is taking it from the cloud storage in case it is a batch data right if it is a streaming ingestion uh, which is again coming from that loop uh, pub sub data flow either data flow or not data flow right so earlier it was always going through the data flow uh, but now uh, we are able to ingest the data directly using the pub sub and bigquery okay so if in case it is from the uh, this pub sub and data flow uh, or just the pub sub uh, from the uh, the real time then it's a streaming ingestion that we are taking to be query and real time we are able to perform all the analysis and recommend immediately to the user okay this product is going to be uh, uh, better for you or uh, if you are not satisfied with a certain product there are a similar category of the same product okay so uh, maybe you may be interested into this or they can also develop uh, a kind of a, a, a clubbing of multiple products right so uh, you might have noticed this uh, with the uh, with the, even the amazon app itself or the flipkart uh, itself right so did you ever notice when you are purchasing some product down you will see okay these are the similar products these are the comparisons right and also um, they are going to give you recommendations okay this is going to be good for you and this is not that is coming out of this analysis itself and that analysis is so fast you can see in real time ingestion when, whenever it is happening uh, just uh, imagine how uh, much competition involved uh, with uh, with this uh, set of tools that it is able to generate the query and it is immediately able to produce the result uh, which can be visualized using the looker or any other um, uh, excel sheet or another reporting tool like uh, you can also integrate it with the power bi or any other tool also right so you can generate the report uh, anywhere but this is a uh, one powerful tool which can perform all those analysis based on the sql only 
right so that, that is and again uh, also it helps in uh, in in uh, storing that uh, data so similar to cloud storage you can store the data in uh, in bigquery as well okay okay so and uh, there are few more pointers that if you can uh, just uh, touch base so it is actually integrated with uh, bigquery and the machine learning the vertex ai ml pipeline as well where you can use the same data and you can run the bigquery uh, models i mean the sql model so you can write the sql uh, uh, queries which will generate the prediction there itself i mean in, in the tool itself uh, you don't have to uh, go back to the machine learning uh, uh, services for generating that uh, prediction yes obviously there are a lot many limitation to it but it works okay so we talked about this particular part just now we covered bigquery uh, where it is involved in the analyze part of it okay in the overall data analytics fine fine yeah okay so uh what i will do uh we will probably okay let me see if i can continue with this so let, let's uh, just have a quick look on uh, on on the architecture or the very high level what looker does i mean this is a really very old uh, uh, uh graphic that i got uh, from uh, google article itself right so uh looker is again as i said uh, this is a, a dashboarding tool like a reporting tool which is going to generate a, a nice report out of the data whatever i have captured so it is going to take the data from all sort of uh, sources so one source that you can count in is uh, the bigquery right so from bigquery it is going to uh, integrate and produce uh, a nice representation in uh, on the dashboard it will be a web interface you can also schedule uh, when the reports are generated or you can actually embed it to another uh, web i mean in another portal so whatever report it is generating you can uh, attach it to another portal where it is actually keep on uh, updating based on if there is a internally some data is ingested like just just uh, imagine uh, some organization they have in, uh, they are using this data pipelines uh, from the google cloud now their users are generating some data which we are ingesting through the pubsub then from pubsub we are doing some sort of transformation uh, using the data flow and then we pass it to the bigquery for analysis and then uh, that analysis is generating a report which we are uh, presenting it to the looker uh, with a dashboarding now this whatever report it is generated now i can actually take it and uh, give that link right so uh, that particular url can be embedded into the organization's own platform uh, in in a particular page wherever they are actually uh, sharing the real time uh, uh, predictions or real time uh, uh, updates like okay this is how the customer base looks like or or, or the products they have uh, on their store so how much it is uh, uh, having and what what could be like a very recent uh, 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 i mean we are going to get sort of uh, those products uh, how soon right so all sort of those predictions uh, can be done and then shared uh, then and there itself right so this is also pos possible uh, with the help of overall this using the looker right so uh, and and obviously there can be uh, various way to call them uh, so you can embed it you can schedule uh, at a particular time only i should be able to generate that report or i can also have a rest api calls for the same okay so we'll uh, tomorrow we'll be again uh, uh, going back to this flow and uh, try to explore all of these products or the services on the console so that you can have a even better understanding we'll uh, uh, we'll cover one uh, lab on top of it either we are going to uh, talk with the bigquery or uh, we can go in general and uh, try to look all of these uh, services one by one instead of uh, integrating if it is possible i will try to uh, explain with the end to end flow or we'll go and uh, check individual services okay okay uh, okay so uh, let's have any questions if you got anyone has any questions today lot of theory has came in the picture so mm -hmm. we have to mug up lot of things what are the things and what will be the flow of everything we have to remember this is the main concern which came in the picture in the whole right agree and in one question in the environment side if any 
starting level any person is joining in the company you can stop mm-hmm. recording i think that will be better that is not reference for this one okay so uh, as we covered uh, so far uh, this is all that we have for today uh, for the data analytics components so we start with the ingestion uh, then the pre processing or the processing uh, then the analysis and reporting with the looker with the help of looker so in our next session we are going to go through some of the labs and yeah so that would be all for this session